Welcome along to the latest edition of Rugby League Bat Chat. We're here at the Ark in Headingley. And joining us, the man simply known as the legend, at least that's what he calls himself, it's Gary Schofield, <laughs> one of the most charismatic and controversial characters ever to enter Rugby League. It's Dr Marwan Kukash and the sage of Super League himself <laughs> from 4020 Magazine, it's Phil Kaplan. Welcome along, guys. Marwan, great to have you here. Um, first of all, we know you're no longer the head honcho at Salford. Are you... Uh -huh. Are you feeling more relaxed uh, out of the day-to-day -day stress of running the Super League club? Yes, I am. You know, and I'm enjoying life, um, taking more holidays, and I've got more spare cash in my pocket <laughs> to, to spend on these holidays. But no, I mean, uh, seriously, um, although I'm not involved in a day-to-day -day, uh, running of the club, of course, I'm emotionally still yeah. attached to the club, and I still want the club to succeed. And I've done all my work last summer to ensure that the club stays viable for the next for this season yeah. for example the uh, the club don't really have any debt to sp you know to have to bear this season mm -hmm. their short sponsorship is the best in the league and they have a fantastic um, uh, stadium agreement and provided and i you know i i like the approach of the new directors to make it um, um, a community club yeah. and uh, to start bringing kids in you know bring the academy back. It's a good approach. Maybe it's something I should have done before. But nevertheless, they need the community behind them because what the directors don't have is the cash to put it themselves. So they need the, co the community to buy Are it. Are you too. enjoying watching it as a fan? Watching Rugby League as a know, fan now? I, uh, you know, I, um, not only I go to Salford to watch their games, uh, but I go to other uh, Super League yeah. clubs. And, um, uh, you know, it's a great other clubs made me feel uh, more than welcome. Yeah and um, I watch every single TV uh, game on TV. Well, just about thawed out because it was a terrible weekend for weather, wasn't it? A couple of games uh, were called off, so we didn't get a full uh, quota of Super League matches. But uh, what have you made of the truncated weekend, Phil, and then uh, you know what else we've seen in the Super League and elsewhere this season so far? I think the first thing we need to pay credit to were all the volunteers that made sure those four games got on. That was a fantastic... Um, not only an effort, but a, a community effort, which the sport is renowned for. I think some chairmen went uh, above and beyond. One of those who was rewarded, obviously, was Michael Carter at Wakefield, yeah. who I think are the story of the season so far. The fact that they have had their best start since 1945. I've heard it said it's because of the teams they've played against. I don't buy into that it's at all. It's because of the teams they've played against. I don't buy into that <laughs> no, at all. Forwards, <laughs> forwards out of four is terrific, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and if wave, that is your best start yeah. since 1945, that is something to celebrate. Yeah. And I think the, the way they've gone about playing in this part of the year, when you've mentioned the inclement weather, you know, what do you want? You, you need discipline, you need a good kicking game, you need on, great online yeah. defence. They've shown all of that. And, and the star who perhaps we, we've enjoyed watching more than anybody else is Ben Barber. Yeah. We thought it might be. Uh, been absolutely um, captivated by his performances, but I think we're missing something there if we just focus on him. Saints only conceded an average of eight points a yeah. game. That's but why they're yeah, in fact, joint top. Wakefield briefly because they kicked off before St Helens in the in the game when Barber was outstanding. Mm. They were actually top of Super League. They have been top before in Super League, uh, but to be, be top of the table and now joint top of the table, it's some achievement, isn't it? It is, and uh, I say, but also as well, the, the, the players they enjoy playing there, aren't they? And the, the coach Chris Chester uh, is giving them that freedom. He's giving them that. Uh, a vision and awareness from to play from there. They're enjoying themselves. They're going to work every day, Rod, and uh, as I say going into training with that smile on their face. And also as well, Chris Chess at this moment in time, the quality of what he's got is resting players. But it's not just resting players because from a point of view they may be injured or maybe looking a bit tired. What it is is resting because the quality of what he's got waiting to get a game to prove a point. So he's getting quality, replacing quality. It's waiting for them to add for many, many years. So now he's got competition for places. The players are very happy, and I'll tell you what as well. You're a Batman uh, to Rod as well. I tell you what, the way that Liam Finn is playing, you wouldn't rule him out. You wouldn't rule him out for the Man of Steel. Okay, he may not be the quickest. He may not be the. He may not be. Hey, listen, hey, Marwan, honestly, he may not be the quickest on the legs, but one thing for sure, how quick is he? between the years. He's a sensational player at this moment in time, keeping everything ticking over. Wait have got a very well balanced side. New world, are you, are you new world record believe? there, by the way. Three minutes before he said vision and awareness. <laughs> are you starting to believe they are a top four side? I am indeed. I'm, hey, hey, listen, they are the real Mate, deal. see me in four they, weeks' time. <laughs> Marwan, right. hey, they will Marwan, be lucky Marwan, to be Marwan, Marwan, Marwan. They no, are, they are no getting, chance. They are, get, they are getting the real deal. They won the, 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 the market no. game. The market game is this week against Wigan. Yeah. And I tell you what, they went to Wigan last year. They were twenty points down in the first half. That doesn't mean they're and, and then they kicked their backsides from there. Okay, we'll Wakefield see. this time are the real deal. I think Mate, the, the, the four games they've won, 
you would have expected them to won. Once you've looked at the fixture list, you know, if they wanted to target four games to win, there would be the four games. I think they were expected to win them. Let's not get carried away and say <coughs> they're they, 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 they started fighting all the matches. Hold on, then. I hold think hold Chester on. has made a mistake well, well, this well, listen week. Then. Well, listen then. Hold on, then. Hold on, then. Catalans, new coach, big signings no, no, no. in McNamara, big signings no, uh, Mike, in Mead from there. Also to Salford, all right, maybe a little bit there. But Huddersfield, they keep saying they're going to be this year. This is going to be their year, what have you? Yeah. And then, and I say, who else? Who else are the players? Hulk is away from home. Well, that was that was a test for them. Hulk is the coming back. The Super League. So listen, they haven't been any, they haven't been no, any no, walkovers. No, 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 they haven't way. been any walkovers. All right, so Gary, just, go, just try to relax. They, I, they, think, <laughs> I, I think that they were, they've started favourite in every single match they've give played. Give them a bit this, of credit this, where No, no, I am giving the credit, but this is the first week they've gone into a match as underdogs this season. So yeah. let's see. What but they were frightened or intimidated. No, I'm not saying they were. Years before, going to the DW, they would have been. The they won't be intimidated going to Wigan this year. There is a common denominator for both Wakefield and St Helens at the moment, and that is they have got genuine competition for places. They don't have any of their senior players out injured, so everybody who's coming in is making a contribution. You can't view further ahead than yeah. maybe than I think some the Easter period. Sixteen to one against Wakefield is that a very short price? Ridiculously short price, is it? Very. Very short. Very short price. Who would, you, would you still make St Helens favourite, Mark? Absolutely. Yeah, right. I mean, tell you the what, team wait. to beat this year is St Helens. Yes, yeah, yeah. St Helens are the way that they're playing, but also as well, when I mentioned it uh, regarding uh, Liam Finn, right then, yeah. you tell me then who's, who's a better half-back playing at this moment in time. All right, you've Richardson, maybe there at uh, St Helens, but Liam Finn at this moment in time, he's the best half-back playing. How, the how did you base your judgment? What did you base your judgment on? What, on, on Liam on Finn? Liam Finn oh, yeah. oh, have, have, you not seen, have you not seen his organisation, his creativity, his kicking game, his yeah, goal he's kicking, good at he's kicking, getting teams around mate, the park? Mate. I admire him as a good player, right? He is a good player, right? And anybody could kick penalties, and, and that's what he's good at. Well, I'll tell you what, well, Salford did, we didn't kick the penalties, that's why they got no, beat we, by I know we moment. didn't. So not, not everybody can do it. But not <laughs> everybody <laughs> can do it. In front of the sticks, you'd expect him to kick them in. He's not kicking them just from the sticks, he's kicking them from all is. over the place. No, he's not. He, he is. You're watching different games. <laughs> I think Michael Carter got through your head before he came here and must have bet you to... No, 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 There's no chance. I can reassure you. No chance. Great doctor, I feel great. Doctor, I, don't get I don't get influenced right, by right, anybody. Right. I'll, I'll give I'll tell you what, what, I see. what might right. be a good bet for Wakefield. Yeah. This is the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the Water Splash Cup final, right. which yeah. still rankles with everybody at Trinity. Right. They may be a good bet for winning the cup. Right, so you think there's some kind of omen that means no, that I teams think are I suddenly I think sort of collapse in a heap against Wakefield to allow I them to... I think or, they have a or team... Or you're saying it's going to be flooded at Wembley in August? It, it'll <laughs> always rain. Is that what no, you're saying? Another <laughs> was, uh, I do think that yeah, uh, right. they've got the equipment well, to win enough games... I'll to tell you what, though. Well, one thing, thing you can be sure of, but we're all agreeing on, that Wakefield won't be in the bottom four. Oh, no. So no way. Look, look at the bottom of the, t the Catalan Dragons, who, who had their best result of the season this weekend when their game against Leeds was postponed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Salford have only got w uh, one win, uh, Hulk have only got one win, Huddersfield have only got one win, uh, and I think people expect Witness to descend into that sort of like bottom four area at some point. Are they? Will it be four of those five, do you think, that are... I think Castellan, in Castellan are interesting at the moment. They've got an absolutely crucial game against Holkar at home this weekend. Why are they playing Holkar again, by the way? They only played because them a the weeks ago, fixture that was moved is because they were both in the bottom four right. last year. It's, yeah, a, right. it's to enable them to play in the earlier round right. of the Challenge Cup. But um, we've seen two Castellan Dragons already this season. The one that played at home, credible against St Helens, I thought. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. too far away from Wakefield. No, sure. But the, the Catalan that's travelled has been poor. Now, Steve McNamara hasn't had everybody on board. The, the big signings, we thought, in the close season, David Mead, who, who's done OK, yeah. scored three tries, um, and I think will develop into a very good Super League player. Michael McElormy hasn't had on the field as much as he would have liked, hasn't had Samsoni Lange on, other than, I think, one cameo appearance. Um, so he's well, still look, How much trouble do you think they're in if they get well, beat in I this think, match? I think that we can give them leeway up till this weekend. Right. And then we might be saying that the... Uh, the, well, the rugby league landscape in France is changing with well, Toulouse being I mean, just, the top I mean, of the You've been an owner and you've had to change coaches. A few times. A few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was being polite, being <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, if you were in that situation, would you be thinking, even though Steve McNamara hasn't been there very long and probably, I think, played 14 Super League games as coach, would you think we need to change? Would that be coming into your head well, as an owner? How many games has he had so far? Something like, four, is it 14 in, in Super, Super League? League no, 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 with Catalan. He's only beaten Lee once since yeah. last July. 
I think, in a 14, Super I think he's had 14 games in charge of Catalan. I maybe a game or two out there. To be honest, I, I would have made And he's only won before. twice. One against, one against Lee in the league and one against Lee in the million pound match. To be honest, I would have made the change before the start of the season. Really? And I would definitely, um, had I been the owner of Catalan or had he been my coach and delivered the kind of results the team had delivered so far, I would have changed them. It, it's a different culture and the word coming back from Perpignan is they're a lot fitter this year by getting Richard Honnix in off the England programme that the players are, are feel as though they're, they're in a better place than they were at pre-season last year. The problem is communication. That you know, when you've got two cultures combining, Trent Robinson was a success because he was a dual speaker. Yeah. So when you deliver your performance analysis, your training, it, it's all done relatively quickly. Steve doesn't have that luxury at the moment. Now, I, I suspect Catalan will not be successful unless they either have a very, very good French coach or they have somebody that can bridge that language. I, I, I think all of us, the three of us, could agree on how KR and Catalan being in the bottom four. Yeah. I'm, not sure, about, yeah, I'm not sure about Catalan. Really? I, th I think they've got a squad of players that, if they get it right... <laughs> No, no, but you see, the thing is, when, when Catalan signed Michael McAloram, he immediately said, that'll make, make sure that they finish in the top eight. Top eight, yes. I did, you did say uh, that. Right, but now you're saying right. they're going to win the bottom Well, well the, reason, the reason why I'm saying this, and uh, the great doctor himself has, 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 has had this at his club, when you look at the Catalans over the last few years, and also to, is this McNamara's fault? Maybe, maybe so, because he's, he's got big egos yeah. in that dressing room. The Catalans at this moment in time, right, the way they are playing, they're rubbish. Right. They are absolute rubbish. They've got too many egos in that dressing room. They've got too many players who couldn't care less about that jersey. Yeah. And all they're there for. So it's a big problem for McNamara to sort out. It's always been a problem for the last two, three, four years. And Phil's saying a little bit fitter. Phil's saying about the, uh, the communication problem. That's a load of rubbish. That is a load of rubbish. So quite simple. Then players couldn't care less about the Catalan Dragons. He's absolutely they right. I, I they think you're absolutely right. I think he's absolutely wrong. They, 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 they couldn't care less. They couldn't care less realistically where they finish in Super League. They've got their own egos. All they're there for is a big paycheck. I and if they don't get a win, him. if they don't get the win this weekend against Oakley Rovers, unfortunately, I reckon Matt Lamar There's, just there's been a change of philosophy there this year. They're bringing more French players back into the team yeah, who, who clearly yeah, do care about the other, haven't they? they? Yeah, they've gone, they've gone bringing, between, they're bringing top foreign players, go back to home players. But bringing top foreign players, back, go back to home players. But it's like yeah. a game of ping pong. And they're moving back to home players, and that's the only thing that's going to make them successful. Successful. Okay. And I think let's, I mean, do care about let's, let's, quickly, let's quickly move on because talking about the championship, you, you alluded to Toulouse there, Phil, going going well and maybe replacing uh, the Catalan Dragons. Uh, but what's happened to Lee Marwan? I mean, your, your mate Derek Beaumont there. I mean, they started off the season as you know, second favourites behind Toronto to finish top of the championship. They've got uh, one win in five matches, and they've been chucking away winning positions and, and you know conceding umpteen points. What, what's happening there? I've been to see this two times. I mean, it, it is Mr. Butt. At the end of the day, what he has done, he brought in 17 new guys. I think the mistake he made to have got rid of one or two of the league guys, and all of a sudden you've got 17 guys coming in from different cultures and trying to get them to gel into a team straight away. Marwan, it's going to take Marwan, time. Marwan, Marwan, again, you've got <laughs> Eagles. Marwan, you've got Eagles. You've got players who yeah. couldn't care less about the jersey. You've got Mate, players who couldn't care Mate less about Lee. Had your mate Derek Bowman, when he put when he put the message out three or four weeks ago saying Super League appearances, NRL appearances, international appearances, man, when it doesn't work, if you haven't got team spirit, if you haven't got players who cares less about that club, you ain't going nowhere. Mate, and Derek I, is finding I know that, that. Out. He's finding that out. Mate, I know that because I found that out Correct. myself. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Why? I mean, had I known about rugby league then as much as I know now, I wouldn't have. Should have come to me and asked me. I, 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 well. <laughs> I wouldn't brought in the guys I brought in in my first season mm. and got rid of the likes of Mark Sneed, Jordy Broughton, you know, the Matty Ashhurst, the, the Theo Fages of this world. They were real Salford guys, mm. right? Okay, Theo is a French, but he came in mm. through the, the system. And then instead, we spent a fortune like Derek has done mm. now, right, in bringing big names, people with the egos, the youngest. Uh, the Ranga chairs of this world, the Tim Smith and so on. But if you're going to have a dressing room full of egos, which uh, obviously with a half a million pound parachute payment, that's how Derek decided to spend his money. You okay. need a coach there that can 
operate above those level of egos and Neil Dukes well, is Lee coach, through so. and through mm. and as soon as Lee got relegated confidence low on being relegated pressure yeah. on the you know mm -hmm. the, the fact that they, they've had this parachute payment their favorites you need a coach who right can well, operate I, I'm, I'm in not that we're going to stop you there Marla because we haven't got time to talk about it but we, we will we, we will come back to that okay. I'm, I'm sure at some point I mean we're interested to see who Lee do get as a coach but we've discovered that when, you, when you're spending your big money you've got to get the right big names in just as we have today here on Rugby League back chat at the arc in Headingley we're going to take a little bit of a breather right now and just have a little bit of a pause but we'll be back in a couple of minutes to discuss more Rugby League issues here on Rugby League back chat Welcome back to a Rugby League Back Chat from the Ark here in Headingley. Well, we've had confirmation recently that there will be an international game between England and New Zealand in Denver, Colorado in the United States of America, June the 23rd. You're a big flag flyer for these kind of occasions, aren't you, Phil Kaplan? I think it's important. Give it the big up well, before it's not, we wade into it. It's not that it's an event, it's three. I think that's the important thing that they've announced, that there will be three mid-season games in America involving England and New Zealand. And that's important because we've never had continuity. You'll, <coughs> you'll remember Milwaukee, Long Beach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even Jacksonville, where we were going to have uh, annual World Club challenges played in America after Leeds and South had sold out a stadium. So we've never really capitalised on the American market. But we've seen with the likes of Toronto that there is some interest there. Uh, I think the, the feel is that more sports international who are hoping to get the 2025 World Cup endorsed to be played in America and Canada want to put some groundwork in, which is not something we're very good at at Rugby League, so to be commended for doing that. I think the other thing is they're clearly targeting an American football audience. Uh, they're calling it no pads, no blocking, six downs, which is a great way of selling yeah. it. I think we have a product that fits in the American market between the NRL season. So I'm encouraged by the fact that both governing bodies are going to make some money out of it. There's going to be some uh, potential to, to get television rights on the back of it. And if we're serious about International Rugby League, it's an important development. Well, Jason Moore, who you just mentioned as the promoter, thinks or hopes that he can get an attendance between 35 mm. and 45,000. Is he being... Deluded, or is that realistic? Well, I think if you look at the uh, the other crowd as well, it's been to America. They've had uh, you know sixty five, seventy thousand people there, haven't they? So I'm all for it. To be honest with you, I think it's the first well, time. Well, they, I'm they a, have. I'm if you're talking about the All Blacks playing America a few mm. years ago, but if you're talking about when Saracens took a rugby union game over there, they didn't get. But this isn't a club game. No, this is our club. international. Yeah, exactly. game. It's, it's an international game, Rod. Yeah, yeah. So, and I say, I'm, I'm so gonna, what I'm, difference does the club? Uh, an international game. Oh, I think because you're, you're having all the big names, aren't you? You know, you're having the superstars of the sport. Because we do need an international calendar. We've got it. The Kiwis are coming over here at the end of the season. Right. It's, it's a three-year planning from there. So, yeah. If, if I'm honest with you, yeah. Do uh, you think that the best players will play in this match? They've got to do. Well, they don't have yeah. to, do they? Because I mean, clubs can pull them out. Well, that should be allowed. No, and, no, no. And be fine. Should be allowed, but and should, be that fine. should not be allowed. No, no, no. Right. No. no. If, if you were the owner of a club, would you allow one of your players to go and play? Yeah, I would. would and I, um, I mean. To be honest, I, I, I find it very annoying last week when, for example, Salford tried to play a game at the same weekend as this international game and take their, uh, rearrange their, yeah. uh, the Catalan game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of playing Catalan at home, to go and play in New York. And every Super League club, apart from one, was against the idea. So Salford uh, last week um, received official you know, notifications that they will not be allowed to move the game to New York. I find that double standards. You know, you, that you should treat the international game it, differently from a club game. It's two different governing bodies, though, isn't it? It's the international federation that looks after the international game. It's well, the yeah, on, domestic on, super league clubs so that super look after. Super league players will make that team. 
right? So if our if Super League players are allowing their players to go and play in Denver, why don't they allow Salford to go well, and I, play? I, I, and even even perhaps even more pertinently, we're we're going to allowed to play Hull in Australia. Yeah. So why aren't Salford? Maybe they look at Salford now. It's I time to be back. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand that. I don't. Go on. Come explain on, it. I I s believe there was a financial guarantee wanted by Salford. Right. No, 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 and, no, no, and no, that, no, no. And that wasn't no, forthcoming no, from no, the organisers. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what the they're case. saying. There, no, there's no financial. There is money that's been would have been payable to Salford this week had the deal was signed last week. It's not the other way around. I, I suspect as well it's a much more difficult sell with the greatest respect to Salford and Catalan to the people of New York than England, matter, New I mean, Zealand is you, to the people of Denver. But like you said, you've allowed Hull and Wigan yeah. to go and play there yeah. so in, in Australia. Yeah. Why not allow Catalan? If Catalan is all for it's, it... It's, you're not comparing apples and apples. Well, it's, it's, it's a Super League. It's an international league. weekend. No, no, we're no, talking, no, we're about talking about the two Super yeah, yeah, if, you, if you're no, saying, if you're saying this, that this weekend teams, no, is an international window, it's not yes, a club yeah, window. The international window so now. If just it's an international, I just, want, I just want to understand. So if I'm you like played on the Friday, the international game, you're not allowed to play on the Saturday, a That's club right, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no club games no are being played, played throughout the world yeah. that weekend. What I can't understand though is, if, if you're saying there's carte blanche for Super League teams to go and play anywhere they want between Australia, America and the moon, why aren't they saying to any Super League club that you can now go... If you want to play Witness against OKR in Jamaica or Wigan against Leeds in Alaska, then you should, why aren't you allowed to? I, th I think you're allowed you're to. Allowed I think to, it's the right? logistic... Right. I, okay. I, my, my interest would be, um, how do you think Salford season ticket holders would take to the fact right. that a game was being taken the promoter, in the middle of the season? The promoter has guaranteed X amount of money for Salford to refund season ticket holders for that particular game. A, so a viable concept, but perhaps not on that weekend. So are we what, I, what I can't understand is, are we now moving to a situation, and I, I don't want to accuse anybody of being in any way similar to Alan Stanford, but he, he put on a 2020 game. Do you remember the 2020 for 20 million when England played uh, Stanford's All Stars out in the Caribbean and yeah. 20 million dollars? But is it now a possibility that any promoter can say, "Well, I tell you what, I want to put on a travelling circus, and we're going to put this game on uh, whoever it might happen to be, Cass against Saints, and I'm going to move it to Milwaukee." Isn't or it about wherever. the amount of notice that you give? Right. I mean, the, the first round of the NRL starts this weekend with a, a double header in Perth. Yeah. But everybody knew about right. that when the fixtures were announced. Okay. The Wigan Hall um, accommodation yeah. gave enough people the time to go and be part of that event, and, and a lot of people did. Yes, you know, to yeah, yeah. But to move a fixture when you've already announced them, I think that's that's different. Right. Okay. So that's the difference. That is different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would that be but the principle, yeah. I think, is established. But but Denver itself is an exciting prospect right. leading so into the York. 25 World Cup. So is in New York. Oh no. Yeah, game in New York. Yeah. But he's, uh, Phil's saying that as long as you, if you say, let's say you're planning one for 2019, he thinks it's a good idea, well, but not a few months' I, notice. I think now. one of one of the spin-offs of this game in Denver is that the NRL, who have been not desperately expansionist in the recent years, yeah. are now planning on perhaps their first round in 2019 being played in Los Angeles between Parramatta and South Sydney. But Wigan last year, yeah. was it last year or the year before, they were allowed to move a fixture to London, to London yeah. in the season. But that was before the fixtures had been, th those eight fixtures had been announced. I think the, the NFL is comparable they also in bringing games over to London. Didn't they also allow Wigan to play their home game at Witness? Is there a common denominator here? Wigan. Oh. Okay, we'll come we back to that. <laughs> Wigan, Ma Ma uh, uh, yeah, Ma I'm sure what you like. They swapped yeah. Marwan, just, <coughs> just in case people have forgotten, Marwan's mm. talking about last year when uh, Wigan said their pitch yes. wouldn't be fit because mm. they thought it might rain or snow. Uh -huh. And so they swapped, they, well, they initially postponed Wigan yeah. versus Witness and then it was then switched to yes. Witness and the fixtures were reversed. So, yeah. and they played so a home, home, a home Wigan season. fixture yeah. did go yeah. ahead. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure what, uh, sure what Marwan has realised since he's been in the game, <coughs> for sure, is that the bigger what the club what you are, they just dictate what they want to do. Of course. And, it, and it's just proven we, we Hull and Wigan, they said, what, five months ago, we were at Australia, whether you well, like it, was, it or not. It was last you know, July, so. to be fair. You, well, well, how, how long it's yeah. going to be, but yeah. they, they, they didn't want permission from the RFL, they didn't want permission from anybody. They have decided, they from, a, from a, a money purpose point of view, quite simply, we're going to have permission from the other clubs. Mr Lennigan quite 
that clearly no, states that at me. least I was the owner of Salford then. Ten really? other nobody clubs. asked me. No, no, nobody asked anybody. No, they, they just gone ahead and done it. It wasn't discussed at a super league meeting. It was not. We were told they were doing it. I believe Mr. Lanigan has a slightly different view that he has the backing of the vast majority of the Super League clubs right. to do that. Right. Well, we'll come, we'll come on and talk about that in a minute. In, late, in, the, in the next part, actually, we're, we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure he'll be discussed in, in, <laughs> in the Super League. You know, the, the way that the Super League clubs are now seizing more control of stuff. So we'll, we'll come on to that later because we want to devote a bit more time to that. Uh, but broadly. It, are people in favour of playing a game in the middle of the season in Denver? Do you, you think that's a good no, idea? I'm no, no, I'm not. I don't think it will add any value right. to the game here in right. this country. From an, from an international point of view, yes, right. I do. Yeah. Right. 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 I also think from the players' point of view it's very important. Right. If yeah. you look at it just from, an, from an, an England... Well, I think England gained a lot of benefit playing Samoa in that mid-season break. I think. They? Yes, I think Why? so. I think that, that was um, an important catalyst to the way they performed right. in the World Cup. I think offering players really? the chance to play in different locations right. is part of their experience. How are we going to hold on to, to players? How are we going to get them to, the young right. guys to sign extended contracts because right. of the promise of seeing the world through their right. charity Are they actually sport. being paid, these players, for this escapade? Yes. I bet they're not getting paid as much as the rugby union players are getting paid. No, they won't paid be being paid, paid as much, but they right. will be being paid. <laughs> right. Uh, also on the move is the uh, rugby league headquarters. Now, this is a... Uh, an announcement this week where they're getting out of Red Hall in Leeds to go to uh, basically where the Etihad is in Manchester near you. Yeah, I wish. Is this a good idea? I wish they'd done it a few years ago. Well, you saved all the petrol, yeah. All the money <laughs> on the petrol coming up to, to Leeds, we stuck in there. Uh, I, I think it's a, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not really sure why they've done it. Well, in order to no. make a just, I mean. It, it, have they done it because they need to sell off Red Hall or, you know... Well, they, they, sell, they, they will sell Red Hall, won't they, surely? Don't they? Well, they can either sell it or rent it out. Or rent they it own out. it. Right. They, yeah. they, they bought it in 2009. Right. So if, I, if, I, if I, in my house, which I, if I own my house and decide to sell my house to go into rent accommodation, people would look at me like I was mad, wouldn't they? Unless you, you go in there with a strategy. Right. And maybe there is a strategy to try to grow the game in Manchester. Right. I don't think that's the reason they're doing it. I think that's a side effect of why they're doing it. I think it is a potential game changer. Yeah. I mean, Red Hall at the moment is um, going to be surrounded by um, houses. Yes. So the, the greenhouses owned by the council behind it have already been sold off. The, uh, the garden centre that was at the yeah, side has, yeah, has yeah. been sold yeah. off. There's supposed to be a link road going through to the moat. Yeah. It may be a very good time to be cashing Getting in out. on Red Hall. Right. Yes. So right. that's one aspect. I think the other thing is... Um, the profile of the game is automatically increased when you become part of a centre of excellence. If you compare it to yeah. Melbourne, where Leeds have just been, you've got four stadia south of the river that cater for lots of different sports. So you've got Amy Park, where the yeah. Storm play, yeah. you've got where the basketball play in, in their own arena, uh, you've got the Rod Laver arena where yeah. the Australian yeah, tennis yeah, is, yeah, and you've got yeah. the Melbourne cricket ground. Yeah. And the city then becomes a centre for sport. Rugby league is immediately elevated by being part of that. It also gives them some important commercial links, which, which you'll appreciate more than anybody, yeah. that well, get, a, getting in bed with Etihad is not necessarily a yeah. bad thing. In that area, you know, at Man City's ground, I mean, there are some superb facilities, and, and if, aren't there? Yeah, if yeah, the yeah. Middle East, Qatar area, that are looking for sporting events are becoming a, more aware of rugby league as a sport because it's part of it, that can only be a commercial benefit, I think. Favour of it, Scoey? Or should uh, they be in Yorkshire? <laughs> well, to be honest <laughs> with you, uh, you know, Phil's been mentioned, well, a performance excellence place, but I think what we've got to do here to look at a little bit, a little bit longer term is where is the quality going to be coming from? You know, because unfortunately, the, the, the lack of numbers coming through from there and the performance excellence from when we look at where the 17, 18, and 19 year olds are, we know we're losing far too many games, as, uh, far too many players at 19 years of age from there. So if we are looking at that, because I was only thinking about this the other day when certainly we didn't look for my day. You know, we had the Colts under 18s, then we had the under 21s, we had the under 24s, and then we had the Yorkshire, Lanc Lancashire sides from there, then we had the international side. We had loads of numbers, plenty of numbers. If we're looking for a performance of excellence in Manchester from there, we need to get our partition levels a lot higher than what they are. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you might get people from is Cumbria. Yes. Now, Cumbria. That's where I would have played there. Yes, no, you, a little bird tells us that you might be interested in get, getting involved in Cumbria. It's worth looking at. Yeah. I mean, there is a potential for it. I was visiting there last weekend, and it's amazing the, that when you walk, uh, you know, in the centre of Whitehaven, yeah. working to, the, you see the number of kids wearing Super League shirts yeah. rather than the Manchester United or the Liverpool. So, obviously, there is a, there is a lot of potential there. 
if I ever take it, uh, um, you know, involved in, uh, in, uh, in Cumbria or that part of the world, I would start from scratch. I would be taking over from a club, or taking over a club, and um, hopefully the new venture that I'm bringing in with the excitement that I will generate, it will force the other three clubs to join in. Yeah. W so you think that you could start a new club in Cumbria with a, a Super League, let's call it for the sake of argument, the Cumbrian Kings, and Lakers. The Cumbrian Lakers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Cumbrian Lakers. <laughs> I think this is further developed than we thought. The, the, the Windermere Lakers. Uh, and use the other three as some kind of feeder, feeder club. Do yes, you, do I you, think that uh, will work. You're a great diplomat. And I, you I never say anything that offends anybody. No. <laughs> do you, think, do you, you think you can persuade you people that that will work? You can't persuade them to join forces. Right, that's, that's never going to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? That's what I mean, yeah. Whereas if you build a club that belongs to Cumbria, those guys who are travelling from Barrow to go to Wigan, from working to, to go to St Helens, surely they would travel to support their yeah. own club. Yeah. So regardless whether they want to keep their own identity, their own club, this becomes a team that represents the whole of Cumbria. So I, 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 I actually, I actually the, vigorously the, agree with Marwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but where would you get the players from then? Where would you get the well, players from? Well, you'd, I you'd stop, stop, stop from from Cumbria. I, 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 go, I go up to Cumbria a hell of a lot of time doing yeah. and speaking. The quality of what up is in Cumbria, the amount of numbers that are playing up there, if you did it right, if you did it right from the bottom to the top, I'll tell you what, you would be successful without a doubt. Without do you know what my dream? Five to ten years. What my, my dream would be to have a Cumbrian side yeah. that's made entirely... Of yeah, and it's not correct. entirely from Cumbria Lads. 90% of that team... Yeah to be Cumbrian mm. uh, guys who are proud to be wearing... Absolutely, know, yeah. And Playing in need. New York yeah. in the Super <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And by the way, if you're still thinking about getting involved, it's I'm at Keith Cougars now. You're more than welcome. You are more than welcome. Come down and have a look to at our club. There, get me there, give me a nice <laughs> just, me just, just tell me what you want and you can ride <laughs> as much, much red. Much red, red, OK. okay. Then. Yeah. Let me know which one it is. But Keith the Cougars, you are more than welcome to come down. Well, we've seen, you know, we've seen <laughs> Rumpa League expanding <laughs> to play all over the world, <laughs> to uh, America and playing Super League games in Australia and internationals at Denver as well. But perhaps that the actual answer is very close to our own doorstep mm -hmm. in, in Cumbria and that's where maybe I the development should be need. taking place. I, I think if, if we were looking, looking for a new destination yeah. for Super League fans to go to, you know, like they would travel to Newcastle, etc. Just imagine asking them to go, yeah. you know, for... I'll tell you what as well, Rod, you know... No, 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 it's, 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 it's the natural we, growth. We, 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 right. we, we, we've got your chair, lunch chair. No, 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 we've, 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 we've solved the problem. It's a nice weekend of late wind of it. No, no, we've got to stop going. We haven't got time. No, no, we haven't got time. We haven't got time. We haven't got time. Just make sure it's quality and wide. I was going to say, I hate to cut you off. I'm talking about the league in Cumbria. I'll, I'll tell you what, they would get behind it because if you I can't look, stop him, he's, he's you, look, can you look at the international calendar, what they've had up there. When, when Scotland right. had a player from there, the crowd would turn up because they want to see quality. They would eventually buy into it. I'll tell you what, I hope you do get involved because if anybody's going to change it, it's a great doctor. Right, that's it. You've had your say. We've got to take a break. We've got plenty more to discuss here on Rugby League Back Chat. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the third and final part of Rugby League Bat Chat coming to you from the Ark here in Headingley. Let's get stuck into the uh, meeting between the RFL in the persona of Ralph Rimmer and Matchroom Sport in the persona of Eddie Hearn that's uh, taken place. Um, it's an intriguing one, this. Um, I, I kind of get it from... Because Ralph Rimmer, a man who's the acting chief executive, has done something that's going to be very popular with a lot of rugby league fans and met Eddie Hearn to possibly enhance his opportunity of becoming the permanent chief executive. But what, what, do you think there's any benefit to this meeting, Marwan? 
Well, at least it's uh, an acknowledgement by uh, Ralph or the RFL that the sport does need external help. And if it comes in from people like at the hand, that's great. But I think the biggest problem we have now is the is Super League clubs themselves, right? Super League clubs could make or break the sport yeah. over the next 12 months, genuinely. And it depends on what decisions they come up with. Unfortunately, there's a, th they're not united at all. Right. Okay? And that's a big problem because it's allowing somebody, you know, Ian Lennigan to lead that group. Right. And for me, Ian Lennigan is a shrewd operator. Yes. And he will always be looking after himself and Wigan rather than the rest of the sport. Right. Right. Well, just, just to explain, we've got a situation here that's happened, developed over the off season, October, November, where the Super League clubs, or at least the majority of the Super League clubs, have now decided that they want more control over the game, they want more yeah. control over the money. Yeah. They've essentially, to all intents and purposes, changed the hierarchy at the Rugby Football League with uh, Nigel Wood and Roger Draper disappearing. Yeah. And now we've got Ralph Rimmer in charge of the RFL. So should Eddie Hearn, is Eddie Hearn barking up the wrong tree, or has the, wrong, has the wrong tree gone to Eddie Hearn? And should the Super League tree have gone there rather I'm, than I'm not convinced Eddie Hearn can change the fortunes of the sport. Right. The uh, sport or the clubs, Super League clubs, the problem is there. Right. Right. They need to two, make the changes themselves. Here. It wasn't just Ralph that went to see Eddie Hearn. No. Mark Foster was there as well. Well, fair enough. Mark Foster, who took the picture of Ralph and Eddie yes, Hearn, he did. Yes, right. is representing the Super League clubs. He's the general manager of Super League. So they right. are, the talks that there are with the Hearn matchroom empire are well, if you like, well, yes, but shouldn't he be talking to Ian Lennigan or Eamon well, McManus? Or what? What? What we need to differentiate here is Eddie Hearn is not being touted as the next chief executive no, of the Rugby Football League. He's going to be there, there is a, a synergy between what Eddie Hearn does in his businesses with sports like boxing and darts that have uh, a similar infrastructure and background to rugby league. Yeah. He can see money; otherwise, he wouldn't entertain such things. No. He also has expertise not only in social marketing, which we're not very good at in rugby yeah. league, if we're perfectly honest, but also the promotion of personality. Yeah. And I think the RFL aspect of this doesn't necessarily concern the Super League clubs. We apparently have ambassador contracts for some of our top players, people like Johnny Lomax, we're led to believe, yeah. Mike McMeekin, Callum Watkins. Yeah. So we're paying them the extra money to be ambassadors, but yeah. we don't know how they can be right. ambassadors. Okay. So linking up with Matchroom, I think that's something that Eddie Hearn can help with. Right. They're, they're an, Matchroom essentially are an event, you, you do event, every darts event, every pre, there's 16 nights of Premier League darts and every single one is an event, separate event. And they're hugely successful and they all sell out and they get huge TV audiences. Uh, and he's tr they've tried to do it with a couple of other sports. Net they did it with netball and they did it with yeah. basketball at the O2 yeah. Arena. You might remember my one. They did fast fives where they reduced the number of players on the court and changed the scoring system and you could shoot from half court for five points and all this kind of stuff. So do you think it'd be a good idea if they gave him the magic, said to Eddie and Barry Hearn and Matchroom, right, you run the magic weekend. If you want nines, have nines, sevens, whatever you want. Would that work? An event. No, listen, we're, we're not a circus. You know, we, uh, we're a professional sport and right. we need to be run professionally. And, but unfortunately. Right, you're saying that darts is a circus? Well, well it is. Well, it's <laughs> a circus tavern. Well, it is. Well, well, well it is. You, you, look, you, you look at all the razzmatazz what's been brought it's in and, and the yeah. way that they sell it. But, right. you know, we're supposed to be a serious sport here. But the biggest problem is, and, and as we all know, the game is not run by the RFL, it is run by the club chairman. And until the club chairman decide, right. for the good of the game, they want to go in one direction and look after the sport in general of rugby league, I'm afraid to say we're going to be in a mess yeah. like we are in now. Because but, but until, I, until somebody until somebody says, for the good of the, the greatest game of all, even so with the championship clubs and league one as well, we have got to save the game. Because if not, the bigger they're going to get bigger, they want all the money and forget the rest. What motivates my good friend here is money. And if Eddie Hearn can bring extra money by making something an event, then the Super League chairman would look at it. You take, for example, the World Club Challenge, yeah. which we've messed about with yeah, for yeah, years. Yeah. We, we can't decide whether it's a series, whether it's four teams, three teams, two teams. We, we've been saying for long enough, this is a, a, a product that we could sell worldwide. Yeah. We haven't got the ability to do that. How do we get the NRL to buy into it? Money. money. If yeah. Eddie Hearn got has got links with yeah. broadcasters, and I think the one thing he said that was really interesting in all the interviews he did this week was that at the moment he doesn't think rugby league is sexy. Yeah. And if rugby league isn't hot, 
Sky won't treat it with the respect it Absolutely. deserves. Now, if he can change that relationship, um, make it uh, the, the kind of uh, one that he has with boxing at the moment, I'm all for getting well, involved listen, and his expertise. But, but, what, but what he means by sexy is not just good-looking players. No, no. Right? He wants to make the brand sexy as well, mm. right? right? And one of the things, and I would be fully, had I been an owner, still an owner of a, a Super League club, is to allow, take for example the Magic Weekend. The Magic Weekend is a fantastic event. I'm not sure what more he can do mm. to make that more attractive, unless you change the concept and you play nines instead of you know, yeah. The, yeah. just another yeah. game. And additionally, you allow each club to play under a big city brand for that weekend. Yeah. And that way, you could bring the national audience. Just imagine, for example, Liverpool playing Leeds, Manchester playing Liverpool. Just for that one week, yeah. surely every Super League club would be willing to relinquish their brand for there's that a, there's weekend. There's a lot of ideas, isn't there? Because uh, every sport... Not the what. Ever, ever, the, the, the what they're in the well, they're, 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 they're will for money. Well, uh, ever since 2020 took off in cricket, every mm. other sport is looking for a 2020. Exactly. Like, they're all looking for 2020. Exactly. But they, they're trying need. to find it. But all the, the time. That's, that's why we need... But there's something else here. We've tentatively announced a Nines World Cup in 2019. But no one knows about it. Well, nobody knows about Nines yet. No. Here we are. Here we are. I mean, I just can't understand why the Magic Weekend can't be a nines competition. Make it different. Yeah. It's an event. Winner Make takes all. £50,000. Yeah. Your team plays three times so you don't go home. It's, it's all there. Get yeah, a band on. Well, they could involve the top championship clubs in there. Yeah, well, so you have 16 yeah. Or players. even an international diamond. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there is a theory that, as I was told by uh, Liam Watts, the whole forward this week on Twitter, that if, you know, if you've never played the sport, then you... you you might as well be talking rubbish, but so, I'm off there. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know what I'm actually what we're doing here. But Eddie Gary's Hearn, on his own here. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Hearn wouldn't know, you know, one rugby team for another, as he's as he's openly admitted. But you know, he, these people are actually the people the that need to be you, you know the Hearns but, through yeah, work yeah. that you do in other spheres. They would not be even entertaining two hours of their time at the Waldorf yeah. store in London if they couldn't see some commercial no, potential. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell so you why, why wouldn't I'll we? Tell you one as well. Let's, I think we're forgetting a lot of people here as well. What about the supporters? What about the supporters? Do you think they would buy into all this? They, they we weren't asked about 2020 cricket. Asked about 2020 they supported cricket, it. Really? Well, well it's a, rugby league's a little bit different, I'll tell you what. They, 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 they won't buy into it. They won't buy into it, Every honestly. sport they needs will to appeal to a younger will. audience. Because our, our sport is simple. Rugby league is not a gimmick. We no, are not we, a gimmick. What we neither do, is 2020 what, 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 what this sport needs, right? What this sport needs is proper leadership. Right. The, the chairman needs to be told. The chairman needs to be told. We're going to be. We're going to set up this new governing body, or from a point of view, sports have the RFL, and they want to be in charge. And they are going to be saying we're in charge, and this is what's going. Well, because as we know, since 1895, since the game came in to this present it's day, not it's always a committee. Is it, Gary? It's, no, but what I'm saying is, it's, it's always been run by committees. It's been run by chairmen. We need a governing body. No. We need proper leaders who can tell us exactly where we're going, and they're in but charge. Sports no, we need money. But yeah, we need money, and, and to get well, money. What else to say? Also say that. We, we, we can't right. get money. I, to I think, can't go to all the I think TV our version people. of 2020 would bring in. There's a desire for quick. Rubbish. There's a desire now for quick. Quick. We're not a gimmick, isn't there? Nobody believes it's not a gimmick. Nine, nine's is a neither great product. T20. Well, look at look and at, well, look at the rugby union, union seven circuit, which, so is, which is part of yeah. the Olympic Games. Well, I'll tell you what, ask my great mate Jeff Boycott what he thinks of T20. Then there you go. Well, you know, Sir Geoffrey is. Yeah, Sir Geoffrey. He's entitled to Sir Geoffrey. Had it not been for the one-day game. Or the T20 the cricket would have been cricket dead by now. The Sheffield Shield has just finished in Australia for that. Very Nobody goes to watch. Yeah. So, I mean, this, and the Seven Circuit, as we just talked about, the Rugby Union Seven Circuit, which they're playing in, you know, Vegas, Dubai, uh, Dubai, Dubai it's Singapore. A different, oh, oh, it's a different oh, oh, audience. audience. Hold on, man. If you're not about putting Paris. nines in and sevens right. in, when, when are we going to play rugby league? On, from a point of view, we're just playing less fixtures. When are we yeah. going to play the Super League games? We're going to play the right. Championship games. Right, the league. Got, right, right. You've got, mate, 12, mate. You've, you've got you've 12, got easy. You've got 12 teams in the division. Play 11 at home, 11 away. That's, that's 22. It. Not that's not 30. That's eight weeks where you're going to be playing nine. We have. Oh, do you, we, know we, that's, we, do you know that's we, not going to happen? We have. Because can't afford to play right. less they than 30 games to survive. We have false economy at the moment. Yeah, if you play more, if you play more T20, the clubs now want to play more T20 and less four day. Hey, in listen, fact, there's some people think it should just be T20 and forget yeah. everything else. Hey, listen, listen, we're sat, <laughs> the, we're sat in the eye, we're sat in the eye, not Fantasy Island. Right, but what I'm interested in, because you mentioned there about the clubs running the game. They are. Right. 
Uh, we, you, we, you talked about it, right? We know we know about the, so the, the Super League clubs and that now got the power, and, and yeah. a couple of them disagree, but t basically ten have dri mm -hmm. driven it through. Yeah. And, and there's talks at the moment. Nine the three, driven it through. Right, nine through. Okay. Right. And they're now talking about. Uh, you know, they're talking with the RFL and they're trying to get smooth the change of power over and the money and this. Do you think there's any possibility whatsoever of a breakaway Premier League style? No, they can't. There will never be a, right. a total breakaway, right? Because Super League clubs don't have the experience, the knowledge, whatever you would like to call it, right. to have to govern themselves. Right. Maybe they can't agree on basically. I mean, they've, they've been trying to come up with a new structure. Yeah. Or and talking for the last six months, if they can't agree on, on how many teams in the league, yeah, and it, how it, many teams, it's going to be ten plus ten or fourteen there's, or twelve. There's a, there's a fundamental issue that that Marwan hints at here, and that is that when football broke away, the top five or six clubs who guaranteed most of the money yeah. and the interest were united. Absolutely. The two biggest clubs in rugby league are at opposite ends of the pole at the You're moment. You're talking about Leeds and, and Wigan. Wigan. Yes, and it's very hard to see any you common see, ground between them at the moment. Right. So the breakaway is, is... Will Leeds be forced to agree with I, Wigan in the end? No, what is interesting... Well, I'm not I sure think, why you need to bring Wigan into the table. For well, me, honestly, genuinely, and I've experienced rugby, the ownership of Rugby League, there are only... There are 12 teams there, but there are three sustainable clubs right. that are financially viable and they are Leeds, mm -hmm. St Helens and Warrington and in each of those three clubs you've got a fantastic administrator, you've got Airmen, why, you've got why, why, Gary. Wouldn't, why wouldn't Wigan be sustainable? I'll tell you why because they don't all even own their they own don't own the ground, no. Right, they are their own ground, yeah. right? And Do you look at their the yes, council. Warrington, St Helens do, and Leeds do, yeah, yeah. right? So for me, I mean, you look at Wigan, for example, last year, they lost more money yeah. than any other super... They've even lost more money than Salford. <laughs> but here, well, here, 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 accepting all that is true, here is the question. We're talking about potentially New York, we're talking about possibly Boston, we're talking about maybe Hamilton, Ontario, we're talking about Cumbrian, Kings... Yeah. Lakers. 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 The Windermere Lakers. Who's going to decide if these clubs come in and where they play? Well, that's why you can't Because Ian Lanigan's have talking about international club competition. That's why you cannot have two RFL governing are bodies. Judging these. That's why you can't have two governing bodies. You should so only who's going to decide? The but, they, but, they have two, but they have two governing bodies in football, the Premier League and the FA. Effectively, two governing bodies. Well, the, the Premier League, the Premier League, is yeah, big enough to have their own. A team can't Mate, go the moment you start, the, uh, the moment you start charging. And in rugby union, league. there's the, the, the rugby union Premiership is a but a team long ahead sometimes can't with the RFU. start in the top division. No, well, no. So how are we going to get the so-called expansion clubs, this international club game that Ian Lanigan is is talking about, will be with us within the next five years? Who is going but are to they gonna be that? Are they going to be with us for the next five years? Well, Salford were nearly there this year. Sorry? In New York. Salford were nearly there this year in New York. It's got to, to, to be Catalan. Yeah, but it's got to be to leading to a no, New no. York franchise. Is it, not convinced. Is it? No, I'm not convinced. And, where, where, and Toronto uh, have had a couple of poor results. Let's say Toronto either... Well, I'm living in... A fancy land that they won't be in the yeah. top four. They'll be, let's say they're in the top four, but they don't get promoted this year. What will happen to Toronto, do you think, if they don't get promoted? Well, again, that's down to largesse of David Argyle, right. who has a vision to be in Super League at some stage. Now, whether he needs to be in 2019 or he can continue to finance it till 2020, that's his decision. OK, yeah, that's all we've got time for this week on Rugby League Bat Chat. And talking, as we were there, of Toronto, you can catch their latest match on Premier Sports. Toronto Wolfpack away at the Sheffield Eagles this Sunday, the 11th of March, 2.45 on air for a 3pm kickoff. And for all the forthcoming action right here on this channel, go to www.freesports.tv. My thanks to our guests here on Rugby League Backchat, Dr Marwan Kukash, Phil Kaplan and the legend Gary Schofield. Dave Woods will be in this chair next week. I hope you'll join in then.